University investigates how the prehistoric temperature rises affected our weather. He has discovered that this wasn't a time of steady change. Instead, our climate was on an unpredictable and violent roller coaster ride of temperature highs and lows. It all started with a particular alignment of the planets in our solar system. Three orbital variations, known as Milankovitch cycles, alter the amount of heat the Earth absorbs from the Sun. The first Milankovitch cycle that Ali considers is obliquity. The Earth doesn't stand straight up relative to the Sun, it tilts. Currently, it leans at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. Imagine Ali's head represents Earth, and the lamp is the Sun. So here's the equator going across my nose and the, the North Pole sticking out a bulb spot on top of my head. If the North Pole was straight up relative to the sun that I'm looking at, I could never get a sunburn on my North Pole bulb spot. In fact, the North Pole is tipped over. Right now it's tipped over about 23 and a half degrees. And because of that, I can get a sunburn here and you can have sun in the, the Arctic in the summer. But the angle of tilt varies over time. It nods a little bit. And when you nod farther over, it's more sun at the North Pole, and this is the, the time when you melt ice. And when it looks up, the sun is at the equator, less at the pole, and this is the time to grow ice. The angle of obliquity ranges between 22.1 degrees and 24.5 degrees over a cycle lasting 41,000 years. The second Milankovitch cycle is eccentricity. This time, a tennis ball signifies Earth, a clementine the sun, and a hula hoop stands for the outline of Earth's orbit. The sun's gravity pulls Earth in a nearly circular path. But when we move closer to Jupiter and Saturn, the gravitational forces of these two planets stretches our orbit into new shapes. It goes from being almost round to being quite squashed and back to almost round. This changes the distance that the sun's heat travels to reach the Earth. It varies over a cycle that lasts between 90 and 100,000 years. The third Milankovitch cycle is precession. Precession is caused by the fact that the Earth is not perfectly round. The real Earth, when it spins, bulges just a little bit at the equator. It certainly doesn't bulge as much as this one, but that bulge is acted on by the gravity of the sun and the moon, and one of the things that does is causes it to wobble around in a circle. Just as the spinning top wobbles towards and away from Ali as it winds down, the axis of the Earth wobbles close to and away from the sun. The toy completes its wobble in seconds, but the Earth takes between 19 and 23,000 years to go through a complete precession. Individually, the orbital variations, obliquity, eccentricity and precession have a limited impact on Earth's weather. But over a 100,000-year cycle, these three oscillations combine to cause major temperature changes, leading to dramatic variations in global ice volumes. Ice ages, caused by changes in the Earth's orbit, have been a regular part of this planet's climate patterns for billions of years. The most recent ended some 20,000 years ago, when the Milankovitch cycles coincided to kickstart 10,000 years of global warming.
investigates the changing weather during this great thaw at the end of the last ice age. He uses environmental data preserved in the Greenland ice core. An ice core is like a time machine. It was drilled down through the ice. We're traveling back in time to see what happened. Ali and his fellow time travelers make a shocking discovery. Earth's weather became hugely unstable at times during the 10,000 years of global warming. Temperatures rose by six degrees Celsius overall. But this was not a steady, gradual increase. The climate made a series of sudden short-term flips, dramatically switching from warming to cooling, and then back again. This happened because melting ice caps disrupted one of nature's great climate regulators. Ocean currents. Geoscience professor Lee Kump builds a model to demonstrate how currents flow in the seas. Most of the time, these currents act like an ocean conveyor belt, transporting heat around the globe. It works like this. Imagine this blue liquid is seawater from near the surface of the polar regions. It is cooled by the Arctic air and then contracts and sinks. This dense water flows towards the deepest seabeds. Many of these are in the equatorial regions. The cold water has a cooling effect on warm areas of the world. As the colder water flows towards the equator along the bottom of the ocean, it is replaced by warm water moving in the opposite direction closer to the surface. This circulating conveyor belt helps warm cooler areas of the world. There's a tremendous amount of heat energy that's transferred as part of this ocean circulation. But during the Ice Age meltdown, Billions of litres of cold, fresh water poured into the ocean. This disrupted the climate-regulating conveyor belt that spreads warm water around our planet. Kump uses this red liquid to represent fresh meltwater from the thawing ice caps. It's very cold, so it should sink but it's lighter than seawater because it doesn't have any salt in it. The meltwater spreads like a blanket across the top of the ocean and instead of sinking, stays on top. It floats on the surface and prevents the ocean's conveyor belt circulation from functioning properly. Complex natural mechanisms in our environment were thrown out of balance by climate change. But the end of the Ice Age brings even more dramatic consequences to the geography and geology of our restless planet.